the economy is going to crash at some point and I'm going to be ready. Will you? Well, after this video, you will because I'm going to share with you the best investments to make when, not if, the economy crashes. These investments are some that my friends have made during this last five, six years and they've become millionaires from and so will we during the next rise and fall. Welcome to the Millennial's Guide to Money where you learn how to dominate your finances and own your life. So, so let's imagine the market has just crashed. Your spouse has lost his or her job. Your income has been slashed by 25%. What do you do? Well, you start getting rid of anything and everything that is excessive. You get rid of the memberships you're not using, the subscriptions. You stop buying nice clothes and jewelry. Uh, vacation plans go out the window. Maybe you get rid of your nice car and you still get a, a basic car. You have a big house. Maybe you sell the house or you're forced out and you have to rent an apartment. Bottom line is we still need some basic things, but it won't be as fancy. There won't be room in the budget for gourmet $5 cupcakes, but we might still want cupcakes from the grocery store that cost $3 for a six pack. Uh, coffee, will we go to Starbucks every day for five or $6 for our latte? Well, that's almost $200 a month. No, we'll probably just buy Starbucks coffee or, or Folgers and make it at home. That makes a lot more sense. So there are basics that we'll need, but we get rid of the luxuries first. Personally, I think stores like Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, they will do well because they are based on value, based on getting nicer clothes, but for far less. Nordstrom Rack might do okay, but regular Nordstrom, I don't think will. All these stores at the mall that are premium will do bad. People are gonna be looking for, how can I stretch the dollar the most? Whole Foods, I could see Whole Foods doing poorly while Trader Joe's and Walmart Grocery doing well. A lot more people will go saying, hey, I only have $100 on groceries, what's the most I can get? Well, at Trader Joe's, you can get a lot more and at uh, Walmart, you can get a lot more than you could at Whole Foods. Companies like that are always worth looking into. Think of ramen noodles as well. People order or eat ramen noodles in college because it's so affordable. Well, maybe they'll do the same when the economy's bad. But when it comes to investing, I'm not a big fan of investing in companies because I just don't know too much about it. Real estate is the best thing for me. Real estate is something that the prices have gone insanely up and people are just over leveraging themselves left and right, but when the economy's bad and they can't afford their mortgages and houses are losing value 20%, 30%, 40%, that's a great time to have a nest egg and invest because people will have to rent. They'll have to give up their place that's, and lose a lot of money and the banks will lose a lot of money. But then we come in and we buy a duplex or a four unit or a six unit, whatever we can at a steep discount, rent it out to these people that have lost their place and they'll have to rebuild their credit and rebuild their lives. But we provide the solution for them and we get a property at a good price. That's a win-win situation. Another great investment is education. And this goes throughout any economy because whatever we learn, whatever skill set, whatever knowledge we get, we can always take with us no matter how good or how bad the economy is. It's something that will stay with us for the rest of our life and it has exponential growth because if you learn something now and apply it, then it could produce income that will just grow and grow and grow and then you learn more and you grow more. So education, and I don't mean school, I don't mean going to college, I just mean online certificates, learning a new language, things that will actually become valuable skill sets to generating more value in the world, generating more income whenever, either now or when the economy gets better. And the next thing is relationships. Just like education, relationships are vital because it doesn't matter what the economy is like. If you are there for a friend during the tough times, then maybe in five years when the economy is great again, they'll be there for you with a huge opportunity. That's one of my biggest mistakes is I never invested as much as I should have in relationships. And that is key because it's fulfilling as well. You invest in your spouse, in your friends, in people you believe in, and it is not only just a great thing because you never know how it'll come back to you, but it's one of the most connected and alive feelings you can get. So personally, if you ask me, what will you do when the economy crashes, I will tell you this, I will focus on buying a multifamily property in Florida, six units, eight units, as big as I can get, get as much passive income from that as possible, 
always continue my education, which will never stop until the day I die. I always listen to book, uh, audiobooks, podcasts, read books, things like that, and strengthen my relationships, and that will continue to go because five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, a good, good relationship that's being cultivated with quality people will be not only fulfilling, but pay itself off a hundredfold. Thanks for watching the Millennials Guide to Money. I'm Brad. Subscribe and let me know what you think. See you next time.